Now, hello everybody. Now, we are continuing with the radiopath series that we have started in NAMS with the intent to create a correlative uh, understanding of a disease. In the series, if you have been following us on our YouTube channel, you will see that we have shared uh, previously cases where we have discussed both the pathological finding and the resultant radiological finding of a disease. In continuing with the same intention, we continue with a series of cases today and I will start with the first case with the history then I will show you how the radiologically the disease present and I have with me Dr. Sanjeev who would discuss the pathology of the same disease my name is Dr. Sumer I am I will be your radiologist today okay now with this let us start with the first case now here you have a 32 year old female with history four kids presents with progressive headache for last five years as a radiologist when I see such a history I know we are looking at something long-standing five years history this headache got worsened during pregnancy and was very severe and it is still persisting on and radiological investigation was advised and I will show you what the radiological investigation showed here is the first image of the same of the patient now here we have a CT scan of the patient where we are able to see in the left frontal region a well-defined lesion which is abutting the fox and the convexity in the frontal convexity with little bit of surrounding edema so we have a calcified lesion in a 32 year old female abutting the fox cerebri on the CT scan MRI was advised for this patient to evaluate the lesion further in front of you now you have a T1 weighted MRI image and if you will appreciate the lesion is appearing iso intense to the gray matter on T1 weighted it is incons inconspicuous you are not able to see it it is iso intense to the gray matter now, once you see a lesion which is iso intense to the gray matter I want to see the T2 weighted image of the same patient you will be you will appreciate the lesion is iso intense to gray matter on T2 weighted image as well and I am able to see a CSF cleft surrounding the tumor the CSF cleft is a very specific sign for a extra axial origin of tumor. If a tumor is extra axial in leisure, extra axial means the tumor is outside what you call as brain, like it is arising from the meninges or is it a schwannoma. These are the kind of tumors which would show extra axial location, and the typical radiological finding is a CSF cleft surrounding the tumor. Another thing that we appreciate is that you can see the gray matter is compressed by the tumor again emphasizing that we are looking at an extra axial tumor and in such patients we advise a contrast enhanced MRI study if you see the contrast enhanced image you see this tumor is showing homogeneous enhancement broad base towards the dura and you can see you can appreciate this dural tail this tumor is showing a dural tail effect and because of the extra axial nature of the tumor there is it is not protected by the blood brain barrier it is showing homogeneous intense enhancement and as far as radiology goes I would say this tumor is a typical meningioma a very, a very typical meningioma that you can see extra axial location homogeneously enhancing female patient worsens on pregnancy probably it was enlarging in pregnancy so I would now invite Dr. Sanjeev to discuss pathological features of this tumor Hi, I am Dr. Sanjeev uh, and I uh, will be discussing the pathological parts of this. I am pathologist uh, for you today. Okay, So, in this, <coughs> yes, this is a gross image, this is the gross image and uh, you can very classically see that this is the brain and there is uh, the coverings of the brain here, the meninges and in the brain you can see the grey matter as well as the white matter, grey matter as well as the white matter and you can see that there is a tumour here which is pressing the brain downwards right so it is not arising from the brain I can very clearly see this is the normal gray matter which is there here I can see it and there is a tumor which is abutting or it is just pressing down the matter gray matter or the brain parenchyma so that means it is not arising from the brain as such and looking at this tumor I can see the tumor is having it is not a homogeneous tumor it is a heterogeneous tumor I can see certain you know the grayish areas certain white areas probably these are due to calcification in between certain gray areas and white areas and I can see this this tumor is typically arising from where 
it is from the dura i can def definitely see here that it is here it is arising from the dura and here also i can see definitely that it is arising from the coverings of the brain so obviously in a gross i can think okay this is a tumor which is definitely not infiltrating into the brain parenchyma that is what also was seen on radiology for you the people. The same thing that we see in radiology which we call as extra axial yeah. radiology. Image. Yeah, the same thing that is seen on grossly actually basically uh, you know we are lucky to see one of the gross images like this. Then microscopically what will this show? Yes, this lesion showed microscopically typically such areas. So what am I seeing microscopically? I can see many acellular concentric laminations. These are nothing but your somomatous calcification or the somoma bodies. Typical somomatous calcification that we see in that we see in the <coughs> meningiomas. There are many other tumors which will show somomatous calcification, which are papillary carcinoma of thyroid will also show such somomatous calcification, and also and also your serous cystadenoma of ovary can show such somomatous calcification. Okay, so this was about the one of the areas. Next is on higher magnification of the cells, I can see that, oh, very classical, I hope all of you can appreciate this, look at the nuclei of these cells and differentiate from this cell. This cell which is showing a very classical intranuclear clearing or we call this as inclusions. So you will find inclusions or you will find clearing, okay. So that is what you will see and this is very uh, characteristic finding similar to that of your orphan any eye nuclei which are seen in the papillary carcinoma of thyroid, although it is not same, but it is very, very similar to that of papillary carcinoma of thyroid. And here also I can see vaguely the tumor cells are forming into whirls. Whirls is what nothing but, you know, it is just like a whirlpool. The cells are whirling that I can see here. And this was better appreciated on a squash preparation, the CNS squash that we, that we do. In this, we can very classically see that the cells are whirling. Okay, so in meningiomas, meningiomas very characteristically to sum up with the histological findings of meningioma, we can see very characteristically calcification, somomatous calcification, then this tumor whirling and then you will see intranuclear clearing, intranuclear clearing or inclusions. Okay, now about meningiomas, meningiomas are usually benign tumors, benign tumors that is we call them as WHO grade 1 tumors, but however there are few meningiomas which are thought to be more aggressive although none of them are malignant in nature. Grade 4 is malignancy, so none of the meningiomas are grade 4, most of them are grade 1, few of them are grade 2. So it is very important to differentiate between a grade 1, grade 2 and a grade 3, which will be predominantly done by histopathological finding, which will be mitosis is one of the important findings. So let us look at this. So there are many other tumors like meningothelial meningioma and many other somomatous type, secretory meningioma, angiomatous meningiomas. So these are different histological types, you need not know them. Very important is to differentiate from atypical meningioma, which is a grade 2 meningioma, which will show pleomorphism. Then there will be necrosis that you will see and mitosis will be 4 to 19, 4 to 20 mitosis per 10 high power field. It should have been 10 high power field. Okay, that is what is your <coughs> pleomorphic meningioma. Whereas, which another one is anaplastic meningioma, which is grade 3 meningioma. This is similar to atypical meningioma, that is, there will be pleomorphism, there will be geographical necrosis, and there will be mitosis, but mitosis will be 20 or more. Then we call it as anaplastic meningioma. So, I, I would like, uh, Sanjeev, if you can add why the tumor was yes, of course, in pregnancy. And yeah, one, well, of course, one thing we could have done on this, which I don't have an uh, image of this, was meningiomas show progesterone receptor positive. So, they will be having progesterone receptor. That is why meningiomas typically enlarge during pregnancy and they are very characteristically seen in multiparous women and they are more commonly seen in age groups of 30 to 40 years who will be having. So, less common in nulliparous more common in multiparous and typically enlarges during pregnancy. The pain will worsen during the pregnancy. And I would like to add here that uh, meningiomas are typically seen after radiation exposure to the skull. Uh, one of the risk factors for meningiomas is radiation exposure to the skull. And uh, I think one of the risk factors for papillary cancer thyroid is also the so same. So yeah. We see some similarities between these two tumors. Both are showing similar nuclei? Similar, similar finding, similar. little bit similar finding. Very, very interesting, very interesting. And thank you very much for joining us. Our take home message today is meningiomas are extra axial brain tumors, more common in women. They have progesterone receptors. They have typical radiological images. They have dural based appearance. 
they show intense enhancement after co contrast enhancement they can calcify on a ct scan they show dural tail appearance on mri and like sanjeev has like rightly pointed out they can be atypical and an anaplastic Anap meningiomas as well do not forget thank you very much our intent with this series is to give you correlative medicine teaching via our media of youtube please keep following us on dams daily channel on youtube for more such videos thank you very much we intend to keep doing this with you forever thank you very much thank you thank you anand